Good morning, everyone. I'm Brian Anson. I'm the research agronomist at the Langdon Research Center. And along with Greg Andrews, going to also be part of the standish or plant establishment section of it. We'll go over some of the, the factors that's important for growing canola. And uh, Hans did touch on a little bit, but we'll uh, um, go over a little bit uh, different angle on some of the things. But I'm basically going to be talking about seeding date seeding rate, row spacing, and then a trial we did here a few years ago, seeding rate by row spacing interaction. So as Hans just talked about a little bit, um, seeding dates are important. Seeding early always tends to produce the higher yields for what Hans was talking about. You're avoiding the heat and drought stress during that critical uh, flowering stage. And of course, this varies a lot by region. The uh, question was, or was mentioned about the Langdon region. Well, up here in the Northeast part of the state, maybe the top two tier counties, it's always, you know, it's the coolest region of the state. And in most years, it's typically a little bit wetter. So you only get um, about five days on average above 90 degrees. And so that makes a huge difference in uh, yield potential and uh, stresses of the plant. And so that's why um, if you look at the map where all the canola is grown, or most of it's grown, it is in the northern region of Northeast still Oh, about Cavalier County all the way to the Turtle Mountain and a couple of tiers down is where a lot of the canola is grown in the state. And there's other factors. You, know, you can plant early, but you can also plant too early. You make it uh, increases seedling stand losses or a slower emergence. And uh, Greg's going to talk a little bit more about this in his section coming up next. So Hans, I wish <clears throat> we saw some of this um, information already, and I was just going to show the dates, you know, had Carrington, you know, high seals of date one and two, about to May 12th. Henniger was April 21st, and this is 2010. And, you know, actually probably the yields there that year were pretty good, actually, if you're looking going out to May 26th and Henniger. Uh, Langdon, I have a slide here and a couple, I'll show three years data from Langdon. Minot did the best when it was early. Then we also had it in 2011. And here you can see the Henniger had the high seals Definitely at the first part of May, and then it dropped very uh, seriously after that. And Minot was at the highest at May 16th. Not quite sure sure what went on in the on the May 4th date. So Langdon is <clears throat> we have a little more leeway up in this in the northeast part of the state, and this is from 10, 11, and 12. Um, some of those years we had um, we had good moisture all through the seasons. We don't get high high temperatures during flowering typically. So like in 2010 and 2011, even if we uh, planted late May or late April, all the way up into June, this, some of these are well past the final planting date. We had yields in our plots, you know, slightly less than 3000 all the way up to 3,500. But you can see in 2012, um, the earliest date was the best followed by the second date uh, around the May 9th, May 9th. And May 21st was about the same, but after that we had some so, um, lower soil moisture as we got into July and August, and it did take quite a dramatic drop. So even in Langdon, we can get by planting later, and sometimes we don't get in the field up here till May 20th. But there's always that risk; it's going to um, turn out not so good in if you plant later. And this is just some pictures that we have. Uh, it took on July 14th, back in 2011. So just to show you when we planted it, what stage the, the crop would be, kind of a visual, just a visual look. So we planted on May 19th and we're, plat and we're past 50% um, flowering here, maybe about more of that 60, 70% range. And the next date there, we're looking at June 3rd and there <clears throat> you can see we're about 50% in June 9th and June 16th. The June 16th, we even haven't um, started yet um, flowering at that point in time. A couple of graphs um, that you would find in the canola production guide from, from Langdon and also from Minot. So from Langdon, you can see um, it's more of a flat, flat line. Even when we plan out to May 17th, we're getting yields probably 90% or more. And even towards the end of May, we're getting yields you know, 85%. But as even you can see, as we get down to June, um, yeah, we had some good yields in there, but 
we do also have the possibility of getting some of these lower yields. So it's still a bigger risk, obviously, to plant later in the season. If you looked at the Minot data, and this would probably typically, um, this graph be more applicable to the western part of the state or even the central, Carrington, Hedinger, you know, Dickinson area in Williston, where you get past the first part of May and maybe it's going to be your optimum. And even it starts dropping a little bit get toward May 12th. And typically, if you get later into May and June, you're going to lose a significant portion of your yield. And I pulled this one up uh, just in crop insurance dates. It's kind of showed a good uh, <clears throat> general indication of, of planting dates. If you would plant, you have the final plant date here. If you go oh, 10 to 15 days earlier than that, a southwest here, you'd be about that April, end of April, May 1st. And not much canola here in the southeast, but definitely want to be in the first part of May, first week, and have kind of a central region here for the final planting date. Again, you want to be more towards the first part or first week in May. And then they're here in the northeast, especially along this region right in here. We would have a little more leeway even then into the valley or the southern parts of this region. But again, May uh, 15th um, or would probably be as late as you want, might want to go May 15th, May 20th. Next thing is seeding rate. And seeding rate, we're going to look at, um, <clears throat> I kind of have the conclusion slide here first. So the conclusion is when you plant your <clears throat> seed, your canola crop, you want to achieve a, a, a seeding rate of five to eight plants per square foot. So, and then you'll generally get about 95% of your yield potential, where if you get three to four plants, you're still going to get a lot of your yield potential, 85 to 90%. And if you get below that range, two to three plants, um, it kind of depends. You could get 60%, you could get 80. And a lot of that has to do with um, plant uniformity. So the optimum is five to eight. You can do well with three to four if you get down in this two to three. It kind of depends on uniformity on the, on the year. And you're just taking a greater risk. So if you're saving um, money from seed by planting less, you're also taking a greater risk that something's going to happen to your stand. Emergence, canola usually gets 60% emergence. This may be considered average. A lot of time it could be 40%. If you get um, 80, 70, 80%, you're doing, you're having a good year. And I think it's important to, you know, to base your seeding rate on the seed size, your thousand kernel weight. Now, last year we had a trial. We had about 54 entries in some of our variety trials, and the seed size ranged from 3.1 to 6.8 grams per thousand seeds. So that turns out to a seeding rate about 3.6, 8.5, and that was seeding 12 seeds per square foot. Now some companies now are selling on a seeds uh, per pound, so you get a bag of seed, you'll plant 10 acres. And that's to uh, plant at about 10 seeds per square foot. And if it doesn't seed that way, um, you know, if you have a bigger seed and you, you're going to have to um, increase your seeding rate. And with the seed prices, you're going to be spending more per acre on seed compared if you had to happen to have a lower um, seed size germ lot. So this is just um, some data from Canada, 85, 85 site years, kind of that same concept. Um, five to eight is your optimum. You get your maximum yields. Three to four, you still can do very well. You get down into one to two, and you're taking a greater risk um, on your potential yield. So we did a study. So I'll go over this um, quickly. We had a three-year study at Langdon looking at three, six, nine, 12, and 15 planted seeds per square foot. Seed size was about 4.5 4 grams or about 100,000 seeds per pound. So we'll just look at this um, L130 and how many pounds we planted anyway from 1.4 to 6.9. And the seed costs, seed costs are a big factor in canola production. So you can see how it changes all the way from 15 at the very lowest up to 77. So how's that going to affect the yield? A little bit on the agronomic traits first. If you plant a lower seeding rate, you're going to have, generally, it's going to take longer to flower. It may have a longer flower duration. It may take longer to mature. And because um, 
Canola is very elastic. It compensates for itself very well, but you're creating side branches which delay uh, maturity. Here we had very good emergence this year, um, but even with that, we had poor cover at the beginning of the year. So we had more issues with weed control. And stand, you can see was 4.6. So we're kind of right in that five plants per square foot. But you have to remember here, we had very good emergence. If we had 50%, we'd down, be down to uh, about three or less. Just a visual of, you know, this is just our plots, but we had three, six, nine, 12, and 15. So you can see if you get three, you wouldn't want to feel looking like that. There's a lot of gaps. And even with uh, canola's ability to compensate, you're going to have some yield loss there. Six this year looked fine. There's a few gaps, but it would fill in very well. And then we get a little more uh, <clears throat> filling in with nine, 12, and, and 15. So the yields, now this is over three years. Um, the yields were the lowest if we had three seeds per square foot and the net return, which figures in seed cost was the lowest. But after that, with our good emergence this year, um, we had very good yields. And these were in our plots, which as Hans said, you get or pampered and do a little better compared to whole field bases. But you still see, we see it still had the high seals of 12 to 15, but they weren't always significant in the, the lower yields here. And our net return was actually um, the best of 12, but again, wasn't significantly different than the nine. A little bit about row spacing. Um, narrow rows, I guess we'd consider it anywhere from six to probably 15 inches with a wide in this case would be about 20 to 22 inches. So with narrow rows, you get more uniform plant distribution, get more efficient use of moisture, nutrients and light, you have less plant to plant competition, quicker canopy closure or competition with the weeds, where a wider row spacing, which would be uh, oh <clears throat> anywhere from that 20 to 24 inches. We're talking here, you know, in a no-till situation, you get better clearance and probably get less soil uh, disturbance, uh, don't need as much power in your tractor, and you have more plant competition within the rows, so you get thinner stem, stems, so it's important probably to decrease your seeding rate on the wider rows, and you get the delayed row closure. So quickly look at um, a trial we did 2015-2016, where we looked at seeding rates and row spacings in a trial, and here we used the lower seeding rates from three to 12 seeds per square foot, and you can see the pounds that we planted here, 1.3 up to 5.5, the seed costs, and the, how many, <clears throat> the row spacing, 6, 12, and 24, uh, which you know, fit the equipment we had. But you can see it, if you plant at six, you're going to be getting <clears throat> you know, three seeds per linear foot. Here we get six. And here we get about a plant every inch. And this is on a conventional uh, type of seeding system. So pure live seed emergence in 2015 wasn't very good. We had. Um, seed emergence of only 50%, it was better in 2016. And so we had uh, poor emergence, but at the 24 inch spacing, we had good emergence because we had neighbors, canola plants helping each other up through the crust. And here we actually had a little self thinning in 2016 where we had good emergence. So you see canola <clears throat> gets uh, wide rows and low plant populations. You can see how it can branch out compared to if you get a wider row with a higher plant population, you get a lot of plants in here that just aren't going to produce seed. And actually, um, we don't need to be at that higher seeding rate. So net return per acre, <clears throat> I'm looking at this 2015 when we had the lower um, emergence. So actually, your actual plants would be about half of this, one and a half, three, four and a half, and six. But we always had the lowest um, yield at three seeds per square foot and lower yields at 24 inches. And the circle here means no significant difference in this area and had a little bit higher yields, at least at the 12 inch row and 2015, 2016, we didn't have that interaction. So you saw the six and the 12 had the highest yield, a seeding rate of six, nine and 12. And we had the good emergence, you know, almost 90% in 2016. But then you look at the next slide, looking at net return per acre, 
actually we lost some money because we had you know higher seed costs. So actually the six or the nine in that year, we actually got the highest return per acre. And Prospera was about the same thing where we had these row spacing, six was the highest in Prosper in both years compared to the 12 or the 24. And the net return for seeding rate, again, the three seeds per square foot was always significantly lower than the six, nine or 12. A short word on precision planters. There's quite a number of them coming into the, the area now. <clears throat> and I've looked at some data from Canada, some from Minnesota, a little bit from North Dakota. And basically, if what I've read, if you have good seed yield, if you have a situation where you have uh, maybe a little drier conditions, you probably have the same um, yield as you would with a precision planter as conventional air seeder. But you're always probably going to get an improved seedling emergence. Uh, you know, as you're shooting for that picket fence, a better establishment, and you're always going to have some lower seed costs, whether that always um, relates to a higher yield. You know, it would depend on the yield. I've seen. But in most cases, the wider roads still didn't do as good in the in a precision planting situation as it did in the narrow rows like um, 12 to 15 inches. Challenges, um, <clears throat> precision planters cost a lot of money. And can you justify the cost of maintaining um, that seeding system unless you have like corn or soybeans, um, or especially the soybeans if you're planting more into that 15 inch row spacing. Mm -hmm.